you keep saying how excited you are about this d big depression and the yes. depression that's coming out. Yes. And you're half joking, half not, but No, really... I'm 100% fucking serious. Okay. <laughs> There's no joking. I've eaten shit for the last nine years to put me in a position to capitalize. Guys, nine years ago when I started VaynerMedia, you got your perspective. I just want to be happy. Don't you want to be happy? Yo. Uh, first of all, I, I just want to thank all of you uh, for being here today one more time. Uh, how did it go? Awesome. Great. So, um, Really what I want to do is just set up a, a little bit of a framework of a recap of everything I've kind of sensed over the last two days. Uh, there are mic stands um, in four places throughout. There are two, uh, for everybody up there in the bleachers, they're right there. So I really want to go into Q&A and maximize our time together. Um, but, but what I really want to talk about before I go into that is in the macro, I genuinely believe that this is the greatest era to be navigating in the human race, I just actually believe that. I, I believe that we've made so many advances, but most of all, everybody that's here today has the luxury of being alive during the prime years of the internet, which is the disproportionate invention in the human race. We are now, you know, the internet was awesome in 1996, but it wasn't at the scale that it is today, and the opportunities are ludicrous. And for all the disruption that's happening in all four of these categories that so many of you are in, with all the innovations of the companies that have the leverage with referral fees and things of that nature, you too could take the power of that platform and you could have the relationship with the end consumer if you chose to. And that's just not how it used to be. It used to be too expensive to do that. It was expensive to build 50 offices. It was expensive to give Walmart you know, millions of dollars to put your product on the shelf. This is the moment. This is really the moment. And a lot of my passion and the reason I've gotten so loud, especially over the last two or three or four years, is predicated that I just know this is the moment. I know when you have the best hand, you need to go all in. And the fact that you are even at this event, know about me and or this space or this movement is a, is a fundamental advantage. There are millions and millions and tens of millions of agents and dealers and, and companies and people that look like you for a living that haven't even begun the process of accepting the realities of the technology advances in our society. So it would make me super fucking happy if everybody clapped it up for each other. Let's do that again, because that was some tennis shit. <laughs> the content is the variable of success. We have an incredible team, and I've heard unbelievable accolades of the presentations around media and things of that nature. We, other people, for free, you know, you can figure out how to get in front of people. You know, pre-roll YouTube ads, for what you do for a living is something you can look up with a Google search and pretty much get on your way, right? It's the creative that you put in front of people that is contextual to the mindset, the culture, the target. If, if anything, I hope that everybody leaves this year. So many people came back this year from last year, talked about they started their podcast, they went more, just an enormous amount of success and beginnings of success throughout this entire day for me. But... There's a part of me that really wants to put pressure before we go into Q&A, and I'd like you guys to start lining up if you got questions. Let's start doing that because I want to get into it. Um, there's an enormous amount of passion I have for people to get excited about producing a lot more content. And when I mean a lot more, something that I got to say to a couple breakout sessions, one of the reasons I had my team do a fake takeover of my Twitter account the other day was I wanted to find a creative way to figure out if I could post 100 tweets a day. 100. And to be very honest with you, that was just a precursor to me to figure out if I can do 500 or 1,000. The, the sheer volume of content that I think will be the differentiator of the mature understanding of this social and digital web 
is gonna be the differentiator. You're not gonna be able to continue to just beat your competitors by knowing to run Facebook ads. People will catch up over the next two or three years. So I'm already starting with the thesis that's gonna help you compete, which is your ability to somehow figure out how to make 500 or 1,000 pieces a month instead of three. There's a lot of you on your first try on Facebook ads with one piece of content converted. It's that underpriced, it's that remarkable that you were able to win when you didn't know what the fuck you were doing. So, this is a really important time and I'd love to get into some very specific questions, so let's do it. So, go ahead, my friend. I'm a little nervous here. Um, Don't worry. Cool. Um, first of all, as a Miamian, I think it's really cool that you're here and you know, welcome to the city. I think you're, you're a guy that understands the relevance of um, hubs that affect culture and Miami really is affecting the Latin American, American, North American nexus of culture, which is a big growing thing I and I think it's awesome that you're in on that. Um, and my, my question is, man, you're, you're winning in like one of the loudest spaces um, that's the most wide open tournament for anybody to compete in. And I think one of your big differentiators when I listen to you, man, that I really like is that your end goal is to build an empire of honey. Yes. You're a context guy, right? Have you looked around? Is there, has anybody else, who's the closest that's come to building an empire of honey? And what stops, how are you, you know, like what are, what are the obstacles that are coming to come out of that? It sounds like such common sense. Like what, what do you foresee as an obstacle in accomplishing that? So I think there's probably tons of big businesses that are run by nice people. Like the, Warren Buffett sounds nice. Like, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty. The, the truth to your question is I have no idea. The amount of time I've ever spent looking at other people, that's not, and by the way, I think it's a good thing for people that learn that way. I love when people go to another company, spend a week, we do four Ds for that reason. There's a lot of people that learn that way. But there's a reason that I got Ds and Fs. I have a different style of learning. And it's not gonna be looking at, oh, Nestle did that, or in the early days of Johnson & Johnson, or like that's not how I roll. The things that, co- the consequences that come along with running a business or what makes it hard is when you create a nice culture, entitlement takes over. It's hard to motivate when you're feeding everybody and taking on all the stress. You know, so there's, a, there's always ramifications to a style, but at the end of the day, for all of you that are looking to build something, if you're not happy and it's your thing, you need to reset. Somebody told me yesterday in 4Ds that they fired every one of their employees which I thought was fucking amazing. And like super self-aware. Like, you know, the end. So I, I think that there's a lot of ways to do this, but I just don't understand how to do it in a way that wouldn't make you happy. I hate conflict and ne- negativity, so why would I build a company where that is rampant? There's no amount of money that can close the gap on that feeling for me. The end, so that's it. Thanks for it. everything. You got it, brother. How, how do you prioritize creating content and creating that, you know, videos and social stuff when a lot of the, the time is taken up by like clients and Makes sense. inspections and things like that. First things first, which is what's your ambition, right? For a lot of people here, they don't have to, right? In the essence, like to me it comes down to how many hours do you work and what are you doing within those hours mm-hmm. and how much money do you want to take home? If you're doing really well and you want content, you could hire somebody to film you and post-produce, you mm-hmm. could, right? Mm-hmm. If your ambition is enormous, you could work an extra hour. Mm-hmm. You know, so this is just about resources of money and time mapped against your ambition. There's no, I can't. Mm-hmm. Of course you can. Every single person here wastes an hour every day on dumb shit, mm-hmm. including myself. Including myself. Of course. So stop doing dumb shit. <laughs> Right, but, the, right. but it, start, it starts with the self-awareness that that's the case, yeah, yeah. and then it depends on how ambitious you are. Mm-hmm. If you're buying into my model, you're running a marathon. I'm talking mm-hmm. about branding mm-hmm. and long-term wealth creation. I'm not talking about short-term sales arbitrage. Right, right. So people pick short-term. Mm-hmm. They wanna buy a Lambo. Right. They wanna go on a better vacation this year. That's why they don't do it which ultimately in this industry and the four here will lead to the demise because the only thing left is gonna be your personal brand. I should have known that was gonna be your answer, but <laughs> I just figured maybe, I don't know. Sometimes you have to hear it. Yeah. Like there's so many things that. Cause that's, like, that's such a typical answer for like across the board. Cause it's the but answer. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> I know. I don't know why I even think of it. Like, like my favorite thing on my social is when somebody on an Instagram post, because I read them, right? And they're like, hey, Gary Vee, you know what? Unsubscribe. I'm done with you. You say the same shit over and over. I'm like, would you like me to make up shit I don't believe yeah. in? Yeah. Just to mix it up? I mean, mm-hmm. it's very true. But the question is, what, what less people talk about is ambition. You know, when I talk about work-life balance, I talk about happiness and ambition. There is no right work-life balance. If you, if you like, like what? Like everyone's living a different life. Like if you love what you do, it's your hobby. Mm-hmm. Like when I was seven or eight or nine or 10, when it snowed, I wanted to shovel people's yards, not build a snowman. It's in my DNA, it's what I like. Mm-hmm. So when you love it, the hell are you supposed to do? Not do it? But you have to know what you're up to. My biggest problem is people's mouths don't map their yeah. actions. Yeah. They're gonna build a huge fucking brokerage but they can't find that hour because they have to watch the English Premier League. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Gary. You're welcome. Hi, Gary. Oh, man, that's very loud. Hello. I'm Ashley Skeen Hi. from Hi, Atlanta. Um, so I'm an extrovert, and I have to, like, talk it out to make Good. sure that I'm, like, comprehending what the hell you're saying Let's and go. it makes sense. I'm ready. Okay, cool. So the chick uh, <laughs> earlier up there, she was talking about, like, oh, contracts, inspections, yes. yada, yada, yada. Yep. At the end of the day, and I know you're like, content, content, content. Yes. I love it. Okay. Right? And you're like, maximize every minute of the day, you know, yes. still have that balance. At the end of it, though, it's like for me, I'm starting off fully in real estate, and um, I have a partner who is also my my real estate partner, but we have a roofing and construction company where it all ties hand in hand. Understood. So he's doing that. I'm really full-time real estate. Yes. At the end of it, I'm just starting off, and I want to do that content, 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 and I don't necessarily have the cash to leverage all the schmegma. I know that's kind of gross, but I don't know. You know, like the contracts and stuff, but when you build your brand, like it has to be about you. So, so like how do I leverage without maybe having the pockets deep enough to leverage properly for all that other stuff? My patience. Oh man, that's that's. I knew it was gonna be a freaking easy answer. Well, let me but t- let me let me tell you. Something. I'm an instant gratification, so maybe that's my problem. You're gonna be right? instantly in trouble. Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> yeah. So like, okay. look, let me just tell everybody what happened in my. Like, I like to remind people about my career. A platform came out called YouTube. I say I think it's gonna be big. I start a wine show. I want to promote this wine show. We, you know. How do I do that? I'm not taking dollars from what we were doing to sell product. I saw a new platform called Twitter. Then there was a website called Samize. What Samize built was a way to search Twitter because for the first year and change of Twitter, you couldn't search anything that was ever tweeted. Samize had a search engine. I used it for 15 hours a day. Dad, I don't know if you remember this when I started coming in at like 10.30 because I was up till 4.30 in the morning because I would stay and work seven, eight, nine hours, 10, 12 hours searching every wine term, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Bordeaux, Napa, of anybody tweeting anything because nobody knew who the fuck I was. So I read somebody saying, I'm going to Napa today on Twitter, because Silicon Valley, right? Going to Napa today to drink some Merlot. I replied, what kind of Merlot do you like? They replied, Duckhorn. I replied, overpriced. They replied, I would do that for 15 hours a day and I did it for four and a half years before anybody knew who the fuck I was. Vayner Media was started in Buddy Media's conference room because we didn't have enough money to pay for rent. I've, I lived my advice. Patience, you don't have the money? I get it. Go and reply to every single person in Atlanta on Twitter. It's free. And if you really, 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 really want it bad, you'll stay up to one o'clock in the morning and do it. And if that's too much for your body, listen to your body, don't get sick. But like, this is the game. You either put in the work or you don't. There's a lot of pushback to hard work. I'm not on that bandwagon. Hard work is the only thing I know that works when you don't have money. You have money, trust fund, hit the lotto, made it already, use it. Facebook ads. <laughs> Don't have money, you have hustle. People are starting to try to demonize hustle here and there in different pockets. Hustle's gonna be put on a pedestal when the world collapses. 
Thank you, Gary, for putting this on. And uh, thanks again for the advice you gave us last year. It helped quadruple our can, business. Yeah, can you tell everybody just four seconds of it? Because it's so real. Because I remember sitting in that. We, we had a mix-up as a, as a post game to a keynote. And so we met at an airport hotel. We had condensed time. And I just, you know, it was funny. I was telling you and your wife yesterday, like, I knew you were going to do it. It's just in that short period of time, that kind of financial impact excites me. So just for the benefit of everybody to inspire them, not hearing it from me, hearing it from somebody who did it. Sure. So my wife, who's sitting over there, Carrie Scholl, we run a uh, real estate team in the northern Virginia, D.C., Maryland area. And we were already number one in that area. We met with you. The time was condensed, but you were very flexible and uh, you know, made it happen despite the mix-up, which I think was a third party, not anybody. That's right. Uh, with you and uh, we got about 45 minutes and you know you really dove into what exactly we needed to put out on social media Facebook Instagram all of that and it was it was pretty simple I mean you could boil it down to just be the digital mayor of your town be which the by the way uh, uh, you know I think I did it first at like an Inman talk in 2009 was when I came up with it improv on stage I was like just be the fucking mayor I'm still obsessed with somebody here filling up the pothole on Main Street and filming it and making the whole town love them. Yeah, that was the example you gave us. I want that one. So we went out and did a whole bunch of series just going to restaurants, bars, uh, neighborhoods, and, and filming like a two-minute highlight reel of what that bar was about, what that restaurant was about, and then promoting it on a local blog that was paid, uh, you know, running Facebook ads, to that area and you know all of a sudden people were it didn't work for about a month or two but then all of a sudden people were like and by the way shit the I'm seeing of you everywhere that bail at that month or two part is a lot because this these industries why I'm attacking it are sales driven and so all the other voices are like whoa that's bullshit he, you spent a thousand we didn't get a sale go back to cold calling tried and true yeah so all of a sudden people were like we see you everywhere, 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 and like, well, we really, we, we cut out direct mail. We went from like 15,000 a month in direct mail to zero overnight, and put it all into Facebook and Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, and it, it took about two and a half, three months, and then we exploded. Normally in December, we would do about 20 deals for 12 million, and we ended up around 86 deals for 52 million in one month. So my question Please. is, and, and thank you for that, but my, my question is, how do, how do we scale it and make it even bigger? And More. how do you, and when you, More. and when you're doing that, how do you balance the need to just put out a fuck ton more, but still be authentic to your voice and, and true to your brand? Because there's a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff to look. Shit. Cause I, I imagine for you, like you've probably got 15, 16, 20 people just working on your personal brand, like how do you yeah, but make sure the big, they're putting out stuff that matches your voice and, and what you want? Because I post everything and write all the copy. Guys, I post every single Instagram post and every tweet. It's me. I write the copy. They, like when Caleb was filming me today, there's even things I've said where I give him a look so he can remember to cut out that part. Otherwise, they watch and look for the good stuff. Then it goes into a text chain with 20 people. I approve if I like it. Sometimes I like the title they put at the top. Sometimes I don't. I change it. Then I take it. There's, there's a reason there's only one post today. We've been busy here. <laughs> it's authentic because it's authentic. How do, you, how do you avoid you being the, uh, the speed bump then? To, you can't to... outsource a personal brand. It's a personal brand. I don't. I'm just working harder than you. So how much, how much time a day are you putting in just Today, to the writing, editing? Less. Well, in a normal day. It's when I go take a poop. <laughs> <laughs> like there's a reason why a post always comes in.
for you guys on Instagram around 8.50. They're like, no, no, I'm not, I'm already, I'm, it's because a really good time for me. And you know, it's fun to have my, it's honestly, and this is about life, like honestly, it's fun to have my parents here. I've started speaking less to my mom in the last year and a half because I need that five minutes to get that one post out. And that doesn't make me happy, by the way. That's just the truth to your answer. The reason you'll see so much from me at 8.50 to nine is that's that little window I'm in the car right before I get into the office where I can sneak one in. And I also know that you guys are starting to get to your day. Then you're gonna get something somewhere around noon one. I don't eat lunch, but like, it's consciously hitting me like, fuck, I need to like think about getting another one out in the next four hours. But like, it's, it's random, but like, but it's the most valuable thing. Guys, everyone's like, when do I do this when I have to do my real job? I'm like, your fucking real job's bullshit. This is the game. Yeah. 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 So are you actually like on the Instagram app typing it with your thumbs or are you doing no, it somewhere No, my fucking else? tongue. Right. <laughs> yes, my, yes, <laughs> I'm posting it. Yeah. Me, me, yeah. me. Yeah. Like. Yeah, no, I didn't know if they, they gave it to you and you did it in a different program or, you know, teed I, I up like you a know couple what, days it's funny, worth Caleb, of stuff. You know what's funny? Caleb was excited about, Caleb, where the fuck are you? You're like six, seven with a fucking huge beard. I can't find you. There you are. Okay. <laughs> Caleb actually did a good job. I gave him a compliment yesterday because I like the way he vlogs me. It's a new look, fresh eyes, right? Me and D-Rock are in our cadence. Me and Babin were. Me and Iris were. He's brought a really good element because he was a big fan and knew a lot of stuff and there was things that he knew weren't answered and he's really helping me answer things. He re- filmed me yesterday posting it on the way here for 4Ds and he, and he got me to say something. He, he was interested in it. I, here's what happens. I get a bunch of uh, pieces of content in my text chain with the whole team. There's clips from the videos because that's why we vlog. Then I look at the title, like do the right thing or whatever, you know, that shit and sometimes I'll change it, sometimes it's great. You know, my, when you're around people you can get into that. But then I watch it and I'll watch it and then I'll immediately post it. And if I get a call from my dad while I'm in the middle of posting it, when I'm done, I'll have to go back in, rewatch it because I've got to be really fucking fresh on it, right? Like, and then I'll write the copy, and then I'll post it, and then I'll reply. That's why I created Team Gary V. That's them. When you get Gary V. reply, that's me. I heart it. That's me. Good. So that's how I do it. Thank you. You're welcome. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Coming up to you in the top right. Let me tell you why. Bottom left. If somebody wants to line up, um, let me tell you why that's so important to read your comments. The reason I've been able to continue to come up with shit is because I read comments. The replies to things are the things that allow me to build on things. It's how I, you know, it's how I got into parenting or self-awareness or keeping up with the Joneses. It was just one long seed to why would I, why is every single person here not doing exactly what I'm saying? That would be something I was interested in. And then I would read and read and I'm like, oh, Insecure, you know, and just you just keep going down these paths. You must read every comment. You must reply to it. You need to, if somebody, everybody here is trying to build a huge following. The best way to build a huge following is to actually give a shit about your small following. A couple of years ago, you gave a talk on how much money you should be spending on social. Where are you at now with the monthly ad budget of what you should be doing, no matter what? As much as you can humanly afford. Okay. I like, I like let hearing me, it from you. Let me, let me tell you why. Facebook and Instagram attention is grossly underpriced. It won't be forever. You know, like real estate. It goes up in value. It's coming. Because Google did it. How many people here ran Google AdWords in 2000 to 2003? Raise your hands. Raise them high. Raise them high. Remember that shit? It's not the same price anymore. So to me, as much as you can, and that means being thoughtful about what you're saving or spending for your life so you can pour more into the business, right? It's gonna go away, as much as you can. But it's content and media. That's where everybody's getting a little bit caught up. Everybody's pouring more media, but they haven't made 14 new 44 new, 72 new. You're one new video, one new post away from changing the outcome on that CAC LTV leads. Same media spend. 33 to 47 year old women in Detroit. Different piece of content. $8 lead, $4,000 a lead. 
The content is the variable. People have committed finally to the spend to some degree, but the people here that aren't effective on Facebook right now, it's your content sucks shit. Or your content isn't contextual against your media spend. But the value is clear as day and it will go away. Thank you. You got it, brother. You keep saying how excited you are about this big depression and the yes. depression that's coming out. Yes. And you're half joking, half not, but No, really... I'm 100% fucking serious. Okay. There's no joking. <laughs> I've eaten shit for the last nine years to put me in a position to capitalize. Guys, nine years ago when I started VaynerMedia, do you know how much client, oh, you do, client service businesses suck. Nine years ago, I was on fire. I just invested in Facebook and Twitter and nobody even knew this social, like, and the digital, I was on TechCrunch all the time, Zucks, and all these fucking fancy fucking people were my friends. I should have raised, should have, like many of my friends who were not as on fire as me, I could have raised a $300 million fund, took two points for just running it. Do you understand the math on that? And had 20% of the fucking back end for being somebody who just took fucking meetings and gave out cash to invest hoping something hit. Instead, I built a business that sucks shit. I'm not joking at all, my guy. I fucking put a decade in to build a foundation to fucking capitalize because I want to buy the Jets and win Super Bowls. All right, good, so talk to me. So, you know. Joking. So, you know, real estate, the, the, there's a limited barrier to entry, a lot of, a lot of bullshit artists out there. Um, you know, director of sports, director of redhead, redheads, you know, there's all these, bullshit titles out there, but really... Are you the director of Redheads? No. no. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm talking about. I, of but, course but, I do. But, you know, the housing market is at a slowdown, especially in Miami, and a lot of people are trying to fluff it and talk uh, a big game, and, oh, it's great, but no, but yes, but bottom line is we all know where, where the fuck we're at. So and it's going to get worse. Exactly. Thank you. So how, what, what's your advice to prepare for that getting worse. Have and, cash. And what's your advice to prepare in that industry when there's that standstill? Buy shit. Well, <laughs> there's, a, there's a period of time where there, there's a standstill and then all the fly Maximize real cash. estate people. You know what's happening next. Right. So maximize cash right now. And maximizing cash comes in two ways. There's people like me who just makes a lot of cash. And there's people like my parents who spend no cash. If my parents and I teamed up, we'd be trillionaires, <laughs> you know? So everybody here can figure out how they're going to maximize cash. For me, for most people who aren't capable of doing what I'm doing, which is just generate so much, it's probably better to be thoughtful about your spending, right? Right, no, I mean, look, there's, there's, there's that period of standstill, you know, everyone's like, oh Dude, no, we're at the bottom, you'll, no, the bottom's you'll, coming. You'll appreciate this, this is gonna make a lot of sense to you. I value the depression so much that I've been waiting for the stand, we've, I've been in a standstill for four years. I just know that $100,000 today, see what people do, they're, they're not smart. They, they, they don't think it's the bottom yet, so they're trying to pull a couple right. more shekels out exactly. while it's good, right? What they don't realize is that $100,000 when it's a nightmare economic world is worth 750,000. And they're not gonna be able to pull out 750 in this little window. So am I happy that I haven't maximized all my cash? No, I'm not thrilled. Am I gonna be super pumped when the shit hits the fan? Super pumped. Here's the best part. I'm telling everybody it's gonna happen. There's like you can do it too, it's so black and white, you know. Oh my God. If it's you're insane. in your shit, if you are in your shit and it sounds like you're in your shit in Miami, it's not gonna get better, it's overbuilt, it's over leveraged, tax implications, it's fucked. The band-aid this time is gonna be much slower than, it, than 2008. A hundred no thousand percent. It. Or maybe, for brother, reasons. or maybe not. Maybe the current president and the current atmosphere and whoever else, maybe they decide to put a huge band-aid too. I don't know. What I know is shit's gonna hit hard. No doubt about that. So my advice is don't try to get cute and get a little out, Sit, maximize fucking cash. God bless. Right? I told Zach to his face, I'm like, we got to hit a big fucking number in speaking this year. I want the cash. Gary, once again, thank you so much for everything. What is it, cozy as fuck up there? Is, like, are the seats that cozy? You don't want to ask questions? What the fuck's going on up there? The hungry people come to the front. Go ahead. So, I think I've, they're just better chairs, bro. These look like <laughs> shit. Go ahead. They are digging into the asphalt. I have a, <laughs> I have a team of 12 
not everyone is interesting. Not all content is industry in, in interesting. Real estate as an industry is not always the most interesting. Who says? Oh, me. Right. You're one fucking dude, dick. I know. <laughs> you don't get to say. Fair enough. Right? But you say I do. No, no. You do for you. Right, right. But not for the consumer. True enough. True the enough. end. This is a very important, you know, I'm, I'm jumping in and making right, a joke right. to make a very big point. Some people think it's really boring to watch men run into each other and play football. I think it's the most interesting shit in the world. Other people decide watching six episodes of Escaping R. Kelly is fucking fascinating. I do not. The audience gets to decide. So I keep telling people here, like, they're like, I'm not interesting. I'm like, the only thing you've got is that you're actually interesting because you're uniquely you. The biggest advantage everybody here has when it comes to this concept is their truth. <coughs> but everybody tries to do what's the right thing to do and they start to vanilla themselves. So go deeper and deeper into content, as deep as I can get. Correct, about anything like, tripped today, <laughs> hurt my ankle, <laughs> post. Thank you so much, Gary. Third comment's gonna be like, I fucking hurt my ankle too today. <laughs> We're humans, guys. We're humans. That's I mean it. All. It's why reality TV won. Reality TV got shit on. Social media got shit on. The closer to the truth, the better. We like it. It's why we rubberneck. It's why we try to like sit and listen to other people's conversations. It's what we do. We're interested. And so we have to talk about more. You know? Thank you. You got it, brother. I gotta go catch a plane. Thank you. One more. You want it? Yeah, I want it. Your shirt is I'm pretty sure. fucking phenomenal. Oh, thanks, dude. Go ahead, Devin. All right. Uh, Devin Tryon from Hawaii. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me. Uh, I think real estate is moving towards the Amazon, which means I think it takes way too long to buy a house. Uh, it should take 45 days. Appreciate it. Here? Yeah. Okay, got it. I think it takes 45 days to buy a house, sometimes two months. I really think you should be able to walk in maybe on a Monday, you get your keys on a Friday, you're good to go, and I think that's where real estate's gonna end up, maybe in 10, 20 years. Definitely, uh, when, definitely. When, I would love to Devin, be on real the quick. front, yeah. Let me tell you how, yeah. blockchain. Blockchain, yeah. Blockchain, yeah. That's what blockchain's gonna do. Right. When it's me and him, and none of you fuck faces get in the middle, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm gonna move in on fucking Friday, he's gonna give me the keys on Friday, fuck Monday. Yeah, yeah. So well, It's coming. And I wanna be on the front of it. Good. Thoughts. <laughs> like, <laughs> build apps on blockchain and wait 17 yeah. years for it to be at scale since you're young as fuck. Sick. You know, start putting out content around these thoughts yeah. as you're thinking them through. Um, oh. yeah, I mean, that's what I got for you. I mean, like, like what, how are you practically gonna be at the forefront of right now, tomorrow, making house <laughs> purchases go from Friday to Monday? I don't know. You, you can't. There's too much infrastructure and too much logistics in the middle in the way the industry is structured right now. You yeah. don't have the leverage. The only leverage one can have is putting out content to create new ideas and get people to rally behind them. And that's what I would do. You know? Yeah. Like, you don't, the, the tools are not in place yet. Right. Like, I wanna go to Mars and eat a fruit. Cool, how? Mm -hmm. That's really, what, like there's too many, processes and state laws and there's just too much shit right now. Yeah. We're gonna need a human restructure. The last human restructure was called the internet. It really is in the process of restructuring. Mm -hmm. The next one will be blockchain. Blockchain has the infrastructure to play out the dream that you have. You're gonna have to wait. Good news is, you're young. Wait. You'll see it. All right. But I think you should start talking about it. Mm. Podcasts, content, things like that. Guys, thank you so much. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching my video on YouTube. I wanted to jump in here at the end because I'm working on a ridiculously important project for me and I have a funny feeling you can help. If you drink wine at all or know anybody that drinks wine at all, please go to empathywines.com right now and sign up for a subscription. Whether it's a three pack, whether it's a six pack, or whether it's a whole case of each for the year, if you drink 36 bottles of wine a year or give away 36 bottles of wine a year, please sign up for Club Empathy. This this project means the world to me. I could really use your support.